how tough was it to, to release Aaron? Yeah, really tough. I mean, obviously, uh, the business of football never stops, and, and those things are, you know, any player that's, um, you know, kind of committed to the way he has for our football team, um, you know, just the way, he, you know, he was in our locker room and obviously a very productive player. Um, that's always tough, but um, I think over time you get used to it, but it's that's just kind of the business of football. But we wish him well. Um, he couldn't have represented us any better in his time with us, So, um, but very tough. When we last talked to you, you were pretty determined that he'd be back. Mm -hmm. When did that change? How did that change? I think just through the process of going through, obviously, you, we, you guys know we asked him to take a pay cut, and as we went through that process, and then uh, we kind of realized it wasn't going to uh, probably come to fruition, and obviously we had to... Um, do what was best interest of the football team, and, and that's that's what we did. So what did you see with, with Jacobs, and why did you think he'd be a good fit for, for Matt and kind of what yeah. you guys do offensively? Yeah, I mean, obviously he's a very proven back. Uh, he runs with a lot of violence, explosiveness. Um, you know, he's a he's a bigger back, a durable back for the most part, and um, he just he's really a, a guy that can um, can flourish in, in all phases uh, as a runner, as a as a blocker, and, and certainly as a pass catcher. So, uh, really excited um, not only to have the player but the person um, added to our football team. I know uh, people think you guys never spend money in free agency, but mm -hmm. why why did you on McKinney? Yeah, I just think he's a unique player to come available. Um, you know, he's 24 years old, um, one of the top safeties in the game. Um, a guy that can be a game-changing type player, and um, he really kind of fits a little bit of the criteria we're looking for in a free agent. Um, you know, not only as a player but as a leader back there, and uh, obviously extensively scouted him through through um, college and, and liked him quite a bit coming out. Um, and he's done nothing in his time in the NFL to you know to change that. So um, again, not a lot of these guys become available. Um, so when they do, I think it uh, it's important for us to always kind of go down that road to see if it's uh, if we can acquire him. There are some, I, I guess, pretty solid veteran options still available at safety. Would you rather pair him with another veteran or, or a young guy that can? Well, he is he is a young guy, but yeah, uh, you know, a guy you draft maybe early. Yeah, certainly. I think we'd always prefer to have a younger guy that's going to you know, have his best football ahead of him. But uh, I think we'll look at all options as we go forward. Um, certainly, we have the draft coming up, which I think will be important. And we've had some success finding guys after the draft in the Fraser market that have fit us very well. So. Um, again, I, I've spoke to you guys in the past about how this kind of never stops and, and we'll continue to look at ways to add to our football team, kind of keeping this year, but also, you know, the years in the future in mind as well. Do you have any concerns that the safety class wouldn't offer you somebody who you feel okay about playing right away? I think it's a pretty good safety class this year. It's um, the draft's unpredictable. It's how those things fall, uh, whether that, uh, you know, comes to you. Um, but it's a pretty good safety class, but I don't, Think going into the draft, it's anything you can ever count on, you know, um, just because you never know how it's going to fall. Can you spend, you know, big? Can you spend eight million dollars on another safety? Yeah, I mean, I think you know, you can do whatever you'd like. It's just there's going to be obviously consequences to that, right? Not only in, within this year, but then within future years. So, um, you know, I feel really good about our, our roster right now. Um, our numbers are higher than they've been usually going into this time, and certainly I think we have a, a number of. Um, players that are entering the prime of their career. So um, I feel really good about it, but it, you know, at the same time, if there becomes a player that fits what we're looking for, not only uh, as a player, but financially as well, then we'll consider it. But um, um, we can do that, but I do think there's you know ramifications to that. So that makes sense. How long have you kind of had your attention on Josh Jacobs from afar, like, like what he might be able to yeah. fitting into this? Yeah, I mean, I think like every year when you go into your free agency meetings, you're studying all these guys and understanding what players are available. Um, and you, you're monitoring that, right, because the franchise tag, transition tags, guys re-signing. Um, so, you know, to be, but to be real honest, not, not until, you know, I think we got down a certain point with Aaron that we, we realized that this might be more problematic than, than we thought, um, that we turn our attention to really maybe studying those guys and seeing, you know, uh, if that was going to be an opportunity or not. Aaron? Took a pay cut last year, mm -hmm. right? Was it a surprise to you when that precedent is set that that, that didn't continue, that he didn't take a pay mm -hmm. cut this time? I wouldn't say it's a surprise. I mean, again, I think you know we were working, and he has, he's got a great agent to work with. We were working towards that solution, um, but you know sometimes things just don't work out, and um, uh, don't blame him at all. Um, you know he's always done right by us, and, and uh, again it was one of those tough moments, um, but um, it was a necessary one for us. So, so when you start those talks with him, mm -hmm. do you, you didn't know Jacobs at that time was going to be available, did you? And did his becoming available change your thinking at all there? 
Well, I mean, again, you don't know. If, again, they they might again, yeah. Pay. Up until that Monday, you know, you don't really have an idea of. Um, I mean, you know, whether they're going to be re-signed or you know if they were tagged. So like, you, you don't really know, but you're certainly studying those things. And um, but yeah, you don't have any idea until until Monday what what's going to be able to be accomplished and what's not. So. Um, we never take anything off the table, even with with Aaron. Like the, you know, that was some, wasn't something as we went through Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, um, we're not really understanding how that's going to unfold. Um, but once we got into Monday afternoon and we realized there was going to be an opportunity to sign a player like Josh, it was just something I think uh, I didn't feel we could pass up. Was there ever a consideration to have both in the backfield? I mean, that's mm -hmm. Yeah, we certainly looked at that. Um, I think uh, there's a number of things involved with that. One is um, not only what it does to our cap this year, but what it would do to our cap next year. And um, I think, you know, my feeling was that was going to be a little bit too much for us to, to do. Brian, how uh, with Keyshawn, getting him done long term, mm -hmm. how high was that on the list of you know priorities? And what does that do for you now to kind yeah. of have him locked up? It was a high priority. I think, you know, he did such a good job for us in his first year as a starting nickel and playing that many steps on defense. We certainly think his best football is ahead of him. Um, you know, so we really are we're excited about what he can do for our defense. I think bringing in Jeff Halfley and having him give him some time to really study Keyshawn and make sure that that was a fit was important. And he, he's very excited to have him back as well. And then certainly the kick return stuff is, is uh, an added um, part of this. But uh, have some, having some stability within our secondary, I think the nickel position in general has become more and more important in our league. Um, having a guy who can who can do multiple things there, not only cover, um, but be an instinctual guy that can take the ball away and also you know play against a run, just because of how much those guys are involved. So I think that position in particular has become more and more valuable, and we spend a lot more time looking at exactly how we want to do that. And he just really kind of fit us not only as a player, but just um, what he brings to our locker room as well. Are you uh, are you for the kickoff return rule? Uh, you know we're we're I think there's um, I think. It would be nice to get the kickoff return back into the game. Uh, how we do that, um, I think, is uh, up for debate. There's a lot of that going on right now. So um, we're working through that right now. But uh, I would like to see that play return. It was kind of a non-existent play. Um, but how you do that, I think, is, you know, I think everybody's all over the board on that one. Did you see enough from Keyshawn to, to feel good about him being your, your starting nickel? Next I do. Season? Is that still no, I do. Yeah, I mean, there's always going to be competition, and you guys have heard me talk this year a lot about it. we want to make sure that everybody feels that as we go into. So certainly there'll be competition, but um, I certainly feel really good about Keyshawn, what he did as a as a first year player with that many snaps in the nickel, uh, and where he's headed. Um, you know, him lock it, having some stability there, um, I think is, is something that gives me some peace. So I uh, this morning I talked to a couple of the AFC coaches mm -hmm. about just being proactive and drafting quarterback. And one of them said, you know, you've got to be, you got to feel really good about your chances of being around in three years to, <laughs> you know, to benefit from that, to do it. What made you confident that you'd be around in three years to, with the club? To be honest with you, I don't know if I ever really thought about it like that. You know, um, I think I've had a great example of, you know, not only Ron Wolf, but Ted Thompson about just doing what's right for the club and not really worrying about that stuff. You know, I think. When you get into this football thing, you understand it can be short-lived, um, and I think you know to think about those kind of things that way. It's a pretty selfish way to think about it because it's really your time here is is not forever, and it's about what doing what's right for the club, and um, that that was never a, that was never a thought as I went through that. I knew this was the right thing for the club. You never know how it's going to turn out, but I thought I've always thought the decisions at those points were right for the club. Some work out, some don't, but never really put put a thought on it like you know what uh, what that might mean for me or anything else so when did you um when did you first talk to mark that this was at least on the radar is that three weeks before the draft is it in the draft room it's the first round mm. unfolding um you know it's not one of those things that i particularly talk you know like you just don't you don't know how things are going to fall um i think every year i talk to him about there's a possibility we could take a quarterback i mean that's every year um so i didn't each Pick. I mean, that's just if it's, that's the best player on the board, then that's the way we're going to go. I did, I think, you know, that was a COVID year, so there was not a lot of, you know, face to face communication. But um, I do remember talking to him a little bit, maybe, you know, a month and a half before the draft, that there's it was a pretty good quarterback class. And um, certainly one of those guys might be available to us, but we'll see. Um, but, uh, yeah. What did he, what did he oh, say? yeah. He like no, he's always very supportive. He understands that, and he understands how important the quarterback position is. 
and um, you know he's always been very supportive with whatever we want to do. So, have you begun discussions with with his reps about an extension? Is yeah. that something you'd like to you know maybe get done before he gets in for mandatory stuff or something? I, I know yeah. it's not until May 3rd that you <clears throat> right. can officially do. Something. Sure. Yeah. There's been some obviously preliminary discussions, um, but. Um, we want to do it the right way, and, and um, so, certainly the sooner the better. But at the same time, I think we want to make sure we do it the right way. So there's, we've started, um, but it's not something that's going to go quickly. I don't think Ohio will take some time. You, you said at the Combine you guys were pretty thin at linebacker. I know you re-signed Eric Wilson, mm -hmm. uh, released Campbell. Do you feel any better about the depth there? Do you yeah. feel confident that McDuffie can play a lot of snaps for you? Yes. You to? Yeah, I feel really good about Isaiah. Um, we obviously signed Eric Wilson back. We signed uh, Christian Welch back, two guys that were here you know, last year, played a lot on teams. Eric's got a pretty extensive history playing linebacker in this league, so I feel much better now. Um, but again, we'll add. I'm sure, you know, whether it's the draft or, or later on in free agency, I'm sure that um, um, we'll, add, we'll add to that that competition in that room. So, um, but I do feel better about it today than I did when I think I spoke with you guys last. When you look at that defense, the, the change at linebacker from four three to three four, or three four three. What, mm -hmm. what do you, what are you looking at strong linebacker specifically? What, what are the traits of that? Because I, I yeah. we haven't seen. Right? Yeah, really. I think it's it's you know again, and I, and I think everybody might have some different opinions on that. But really, the, all three of those linebackers are pretty interchangeable in my mind. Um, you know, that extra linebacker, it'll be interesting how we go about it this year, but, you know, he's only on the field 15% of the time or less at times, you know. Uh, I think the most that team really kind of utilized that was close to 20%, so it's not a lot. Um, but uh, those, all three of those guys, I think kind of, um, I don't know if there's uh, really a whole lot of different skill set. they got to be able to do everything that we're asking them to do from an instinctual uh, in that run game and, and pass game. Um, I think, and, you know, quite frankly, for me, and I've talked about this a lot, it's, you've got to be very careful pigeonholing guys in positions that are like, you know, that can just only do a certain skill set because you have so many injuries in this game that he may be the strong side linebacker today, but he may be starting at Will or Mike, the, you know, for five or six games. He's got to be able to do all that. So from a personnel man's perspective, I want his guys as versatile as can be so that when those things do pop up, we don't have to change the way we play. That makes sense. Is that the position that changes the most from 3-4 to 4-3 or what position? I just, I don't know the 4-3. Yeah, no, I, I hear what you're saying. I, I mean, to me, really, inside backers are inside linebackers, right? So, um, you know, uh, certainly they will be asked to do slightly different things, but at the same time, there's a lot of that is crossover. So, um, you know, they're going to have to play off the ball and, and defeat blocks and, and go make tackles, and they're going to have to cover guys outside of the, um, you know, the, in the backfield. But at the same time, again, I think the majority of the time we're going to be a nickel. That's really our your base defense now is, is nickel. Um, so um, it's really base has become a sub package. What did you see from um, Bretton Cox last year? I know he didn't get a lot mm -hmm. of snaps, but he's probably going to have to play if yeah. you know JJ takes a while to rehab. Yeah. Um, is he maybe more ready than he was when, when you signed him as an undrafted free agent? Yeah, I would certainly think any player should be more ready after yeah. year one uh, going into year two. He had a really good training camp and he flashed a lot, you know, um, and really we stayed fairly healthy in that group most of the year, uh, which really um, prevented some of those younger guys from getting on the field because we had a few of them that we were really excited about. Um, and sometimes that's just the way it goes. Our defensive line was the, in the same way. We were very healthy, knock on wood. Um, but um, yeah, I think he's got a bright future. He can, you know, he, he's shown through college and even last year in his brief time with us that he can rush the passer. Uh, he's got a lot of physical traits we're looking for. So um, I think he'll be ready for his opportunity when it comes. And what did you see from Sean Ryan last year? What's mm -hmm. your level of comfort with him now, you know, especially yep. with John Don? Yeah, he, you know, he, he really grew a lot from year one to year two. And uh, really proud of not only his work ethic and the shape he got himself in, um, but then when his opportunities were presented, you know, his ability to capitalize on that. I think there's a lot of really good football in front of him. His best football should be in front of him. But, um, you know, he got that opportunity the second half of the season to split some, some reps. And when he went in there, he proved to the coaches that they kept doing it. You know, they kept him out there. So that was, uh, you know, obviously I think we anticipated for agency and, and whether we were not you know, going to be able to bring John back or not. Um, so having, having him get that experience, I think, will serve us well as we go forward. It's about the only thing we weren't able to see with Jordan last year is to do it again, right? Because yeah. he, he went through everything, and then it's year two. And right. How much does year two change from defense is having more of a look Matt being able to build with Jordan? How much does, does year two change? For yeah. 
I, I think certainly he's going to face different challenges. Um, you know, not only from the teams we face, but the, you know, the different personnel we may have and he may be playing with. So there'll be different challenges. I think hopefully as you go through year one as a starter and, and him and Matt, uh, you know, and, and the other teammates work together on how to solve the challenges that are in front of us, they have a better idea of, of how to work together to, to solve those through the week and through the games. But so I think certainly hopefully that experience will carry over. But every year is different and the challenges, you know, you, you don't, you can try to anticipate, but you really don't know where those challenges will come from. So um, there'll be different ones. But again, I think having a year's worth of um, challenges to work through together and the continuity of that will hopefully serve us well as we go forward. With how his season went from the highs that he had to the way it ended, was there anything after the season that stood out to you about his, his eagerness to get after it for that year too? Yeah, I think, you know, to me, the thing that's always stood out to me about him is he just doesn't waver in his commitment, his work ethic. So um, I think there was a certain level of confidence on our, not just with Jordan, but our, with our entire football team as we went through the second half of the season that got them excited. But, I, but the work ethic, the way he goes about his business, that, that doesn't seem to waver. And that's a, that's a good sign for, for the future. I was uh, just looking at some of the depth charts of teams that played four or three, and there was a fair share of 240 to 250 pound head guys. Mm -hmm. Here, 260 to 2, 265 to 275. Yep. Is that is that a Frank Budakun's playing in Green Bay <laughs> thing, or is that so in the 4-3? Or are you more open to maybe going adding a little more speed, smaller guy? Yeah. For this, for this scheme. Yeah, I think you really. I prefer bigger guys on the edge, you know. Um, but at the same time, I think you know if they have um, a skill set that can work. Some of those 240 to 250 guys, um, maybe able to help on special teams more than, let's say, your 270 guy can. So I think it just really depends on the player. Um, you know, what I don't want to do is get small. You know, I think you've seen some of these four or three teams um, with the way they play, uh, particularly in some of the sub packages where they may move ins inside. They can get small in a hurry, uh, and I don't want I don't want that to happen. So um, certainly that'll be something we focus on as we as we move forward. What do you think of the uh, the running back class this year? And, you know, going into free agency, did you expect to bring AJ back? How did that kind of develop? Are you fine with mm -hmm. him and Emmanuel maybe fighting it out for that number two spot? Yeah, no, it, it was it was really nice to get AJ back. We really, I don't think we expected that as we went into it. We did have a, the luxury of the four year qualifying offer, which is a, a unique. Um, yeah, I know, had no idea what that. Yeah, was. <laughs> a unique rule in the CBA, the, the last CBA that I really think is a great benefit for you know players that have been in place for four years and you know guys who are core. Um, core players that maybe um, you have the ability to retain them that you wouldn't have had in the past. So um, I really liked it that we were able to bring it. We wanted to be able to use that um, and uh, to get AJ back. It was uh, that was a kind of a nice surprise. Um, but I think that you know the the free agent running back class was very you know it was very strong. There's a bunch of runners, a bunch of experienced runners out there, and I certainly think that affected a lot of the things in that market. Um, and we'll kind of see how this draft class unfolds. Could you see a qualifying offer the contract becoming more of a thing now that it's been implemented? Because I know everyone's talking how unique it is, but with, it seemed like it really is something that was rather new in terms of this particular version. Yeah, it's been, it's been used um, sparingly um, over the past few um, years by, by teams. And again, there's not a lot of guys that qualify for it, yeah. just the way the nature of our, our league is right now. Um, but certainly it's something that... Uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a benefit to the player, which is fantastic. And obviously for us, it's you're able to keep a player um, and, and within your salary cap structure that you wouldn't have been able to before. So it's it's nice. Does Josh, in your opinion, he, he's carried the ball a ton mm -hmm. in his career. And he's as close to a world course as you know, was fine in today's league. Does he kind of change the dynamics of having that offense because he, he is built for that? Or is that something that you want to keep in place no matter what? Yeah, I'm a big believer you need to have you know multiple running backs carry the ball. Um, certainly Josh has proven that he can, um, but I think uh, it, in a perfect world we'd be, we'd you know, be splitting those carries up between two and three backs, not just, just one. I just uh, That's tough on a running back in this league, and um, I just think having a, a versatile group of, of running backs, um, particularly how much we'd like them to catch the ball as well, um, you know, I just think... You get, to, you get down the road with too many touches, that's certainly going to yeah, affect those players. So it's nice to have somebody to share the load. When you evaluated what's next for Josh, he's played, he's played two fewer seasons than Aaron. And he's had yeah. more carries in his career right. than Aaron. Is, is that a concern as he ages because of the nature of his position? Do you feel like there's plenty left? And how do you evaluate the work? I think it's a little bit case by case, and it's a little bit of you know, studying the film, studying the tape, and, and, uh, 
and then looking at the numbers as well, but um, just kind of seeing where his career arc is going and certainly we, we feel his best football will be ahead of him. Uh, that's, that's something we feel very strongly about and, and, um, and knowing the player and the person and how important it is to him and his work ethic and those things also factors in. How long till you'll know whether Valentine is the, you know, a real starter in this league? I mean, I think he, did, he showed last year that he certainly, you know, he was, you know, and he, um, he played very consistent football for us. I think his best football, again, is ahead of him, like a lot of our guys. Um, I think he needs to get a little stronger, and I think he will. Uh, but I think the positions we put him in um, this past season, he answered the bell quite a bit um, throughout. Some of those were on short notice, and to come in and compete like he did, um, you know, that was a, you don't see a lot of that out of seventh round players. Um, but he had a lot of belief in himself when the opportunities came. He certainly capitalized on them. So uh, I like the, I like the way that if we can stay healthy there, I like the way the competition in that room is shaping up. Was I was just going to say with Jordan, you know, the, the plus side to sitting him for three years is he's more ready now than he, he would have been. But you're about to give him, I assume, <laughs> dozens of millions of dollars per year when he's played, you know, three quarters of a season at, at a, you know, a performance that, that warrants that money. Is yeah. it a risk that excites you? Is it part of the job? Like, how do you kind of view what you're about to assumingly commit to him given, you know, the little playing time he's had? Yeah, I mean, and there's, you know, in every um, contract extension, draft pick, decision we make, there's a ton of risk and all that, you know, it's just part of it. Um, at the same time, I think the, you know, the nice thing about having a guy in your building for the last four years is you absolutely know who he is. Again, you can't, there's no guarantees that, you know, um, anything going forward, but we know how he's going to respond and how he's going to react and how he's going to work. And, and you know, instead of signing, a, you know, a player that has not been in your building and guaranteeing all that to him, um, certainly having four years with him, I think, gives us a lot of comfort um, in what he's all about and, and how, you know, his teammates look at him and the organization looks at him. I think uh, certainly that gives me a lot more peace than, than in a different situation. So, Xavier, you haven't had him in the building these past four years, right? Mm -hmm. You look at the safety market throughout the league, it's kind of been devalued. But you went out and aggressively got him. And was that a byproduct of you, you need to do something at the position? Was it the player? Was it the role? Why, why, why did you go against the grain? Yeah, to me, it was more about the player. Again, as we evaluate every free agent class, there's very few guys that really fit, I think, the criteria that, that he did um, that become available. Um, you know, usually got players like Xavier most of the time. It's more trade type situations when they become available, if at all. Um, so when he became available, um, as we went through the process, we, we had a number of players who said, if these guys do become available, I think we have to consider bringing them and trying to acquire them. A lot of those players, before we got to the actual date, you know, we're gone by that time. Uh, either re-signed or uh, franchised or things like that, and um, he wasn't, so we uh, we aggressively pursued it. Again, you never know once you get into that Monday afternoon and how these things are going to work, but uh, um, we're, you know, again, just really excited, and, and uh, you know, he's just, uh, again, his next three years should be the best football he plays in our mind, and you know, we're excited about that. Right, with uh, Bakhtiari, I, I think we all could see the decision that was coming, but do you ever maybe look back and, and you know, injuries happen in football, obviously, right. but this is a guy that was on track to be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. You know, still has a case, but right. um, New Year's Eve in 2020, do you ever look back and be like, damn, like what, what could have been yeah. with this and, and just what has happened the last couple of years? Yeah, mostly for David. You know, I just think, you know, he's, uh, he's you know, he played for such a high level for us for so long and where he was playing at that moment, even the times when he did come back and play for us in, in the last three years, he played at a very, very high level. And um, certainly that would have helped our football team. Um, but also I think just, um, you know, he, to see everything he, he went through as a, you know, fourth round draft pick, to earn it, you know, going through his rookie year, to earning everything that he earned, um, it's just a tough break. And it's a, injuries are always a tough break. And uh, but yeah, I think you look back at that and just kind of, you know, you don't, I don't spend a whole lot of time on the what ifs, but. Um, that was one of those kind of uh, punches you don't see coming. And uh, you know, uh, I think as we went through it, you know, he did everything he could possibly do to get back out there and he's still doing it. And I think if he can get this thing right, I think he's still got a lot of really good football ahead of him because all those goals you talked about, the Hall of Fame, I think those are all out there for him.